lost. It curved over the sides of the cargo steamer a long time ago. Boris Dime would be on board. I'd have to smoke half of his crew to even get near the gangplank. Guns were probably being kept in the hold, buried amidst the rats and oily water. cost you. I bet it was more than his name. Max Payne. Right the first time. You're dead, punk. You sure you're not confusing me with Boris here? But well, you are right, of course. Pretty soon we should get together and have a talk. You son of a... Pissing Punchinello off was a dangerous game. But when people get mad, they make mistakes. I should know. That's where I wanted Punchinello, mad enough to trip over his own feet. Preferably into a grave. Get everything you need? Check. I owe you. Anything you need. This is my solo. When I'm through, Punchinello won't be anybody's problem anymore. Clear as vodka. But anytime you get between a rock and a hard place, just whistle. This could be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. You really get a bang out of this big time gangster act, don't you? Even with all this firepower, I figured I couldn't get to Punchinello at his manor. I could only hope that he wouldn't pass a chance to hear me beg, to see he's won. This is Max Payne. I want to cut a deal. Payne, you're a dead man. That's what everybody keeps telling me. I got your ship and her cargo. I want to meet. No pain, no gain. Capiche? You know my restaurant? Yeah, I know it. One out. Punchinello's restaurant had seen better days. Snow was falling like ashes from post-apocalyptic skies, but that was outside. Things would soon get hot in the Don's restaurant. I knew it was a long shot, Angelo Punchinello actually showing up, but there was no crime in hoping.
when Janela was burning to get me. The feeling was mutual. He was trying to put out my flames with gasoline. Monsters have been guarding a real treasure. The way out of this disco inferno. seen my smoke signals. The Mercedes was revving to go, almost drowning out the banshee well of the sirens. You coming? We'll drop you off at the Punchinello Manor. Sounds good to me. When this is over, look me up. I could use a professional like you. I'll keep that in mind. The night groaned with cold. The garden lights flickered nervously. In their light, the falling snow was dead white before the darkness ate it up. I had heard the stories. The trio were mad dogs. They'd have hung the heads of their enemies over the manor gates if the capo had only let them. Punchinello wanted pain. They'd see the pain. The trick in my situation was that there was no trick, no matter what the movies tell you. No rules, no secret mantra, no roadmap. It wasn't about how smart or how good you were. It was chaos and luck. And anyone who thought different was a fool. All you could do was to hang on madly, as long and as hard as you could. Someone had graciously left the back door open. Someone had graciously left the back door open for me and killed the guards. My money was on Mona. I knew the trio would be standing between me and Punchinello. I had read their rap sheets, thick as phone books. No one would be walking out of here alive. The numbing cold of the broken night had followed me in. Upstairs, the trio tangoed down the manor halls to the silent rhythm of their murderous hearts. The blood of their victims rust on their lips. Vince Mugnano, Pilot Providence, a.k.a. Big Brother, and Joe Deadpan Salem. The pistol was a frozen lump in my hand, piercing the skin, gnawing me to the bone. Someone hadn't enjoyed the Don's hospitality. Someone with a flair for the dramatic. Someone who had let herself out of a locked cell and passed a couple of armed guards. My thoughts were on Mona again. I could only hope she was a good enough gambler to walk away while she was still winning, before she'd run into the trio.
on Lisa Punchinello was that she was a bit of a witch. The tarot cards on the kitchen table fit the picture. They weren't my kind of cards, but I was willing to take a crack at the hand Mrs. Punchinello had dealt. The first card was the tower. Maybe that was supposed to be the manor. It got easy after that. The devil was the master of the house, and death was me coming for him. You're a real angel, Max. I couldn't tell whether it was Mona or her sister. The body was a mess. The sick bastard had really gotten a kick out of it. Seeing her lying there got me thinking about another woman's body on another bed. 
got me thinking about a fallen cradle. was done for. I could hear Punchinello on the phone begging for help. He should have been saying his goodbyes. Punchinello was a pushover. The moment I stepped into the room, he folded like a deuce before a royal flush. No, wait. I was just doing what I was told. I couldn't refuse. She's someone high up. Government, maybe. I don't know. The... He was trying to buy more sand for his hourglass. I wasn't selling any. No, I... which was a real barracuda. Trouble on dagger heels, a smoking assault rifle in her hand, and an army of killer suits behind her. How sweet. I get to kill two birds with one stone. Sooner or later, it was gonna catch up with you. Mr. Payne, it's time to show you the benefits of my brew. Be a good boy now. You'd find that Lady Luck was really a hooker. Ah! You were fresh out of cash. <laughs> Gentlemen, we're done here. Take me to Cold Steel. She had just given me an OD of Valkyr. I could feel green fire eating my brains. They turned to steam. They did a fade on me. I'd never had a chance. The witch had got me just as sure as if she put a gun to my head and pulled the trigger. The shadows rushed me. Bruised mugshot faces hungry for revenge. They knew my weak spots and closed in for the kill. The floor turned into a vortex of green blood. I fell. The flesh of fallen angels.
The letter was staring at me. There was something disturbingly familiar about the letter before me. The handwriting was all pretty curves. You're in a graphic novel. The truth split my skull open, a glaring green light washing the lies away. All of my past was just fragmented still shots, words hanging in the air like balloons. I was in a graphic novel. Funny as hell. It was the most horrible thing I could think of. Someone spouting insane babble, I couldn't make sense of it. But I had an overwhelming sense of deja vu, and the caller's voice sounded oddly familiar. The weird piece of paper looked dangerous. There was something disturbingly familiar about the letter before me. The handwriting was all pretty curves. You're in a computer game, Max. The truth was a burning green crack through my brain. Weapon statistics hanging in the air glimpsed out of the corner of my eye. Endless repetition of the act of shooting. Time slowing down to show off my moves. The paranoid feel of someone controlling my every step. I was in a computer game. Funny as hell, it was the most horrible thing I could think of. It was a bad line in a prank call, someone spouting insane babble, I couldn't make sense of it. But I had an overwhelming sense of deja vu, and the caller's voice sounded oddly familiar. Max? 
the letter was staring at me. There was something disturbingly familiar. There was something disturbingly familiar about the letter before me. The handwriting was all pretty curves. You're in a graphic novel. The truth split my skull open, a glaring green light washing the lies away. All of my past was just fragmented still shots, words hanging in the air like balloons. I was in a graphic novel. Funny as hell. It was the most horrible thing I could think of. Shiny stuff and dreams are made of stupid necromancers. He sings like a banana wrist, having strayed too close to the constellations on their shaved skulls. The there was a bad line in the prank call. Someone spouting insane babble, I couldn't make sense of it. But I had an overwhelming sense of deja vu. The caller's voice sounded oddly familiar. The weird piece of paper looked dangerous. There was something disturbingly familiar about the letter before me. The handwriting was all pretty curves. You're in a computer game, Max. The truth was a burning green crack through my brain. Weapon statistics hanging in the air glimpsed out of the corner of my eye. Endless repetition of the act of shooting. Time slowing down to show off my moves. The paranoid feel of someone controlling my every step. I was in a computer game. Funny as hell, it was the most horrible thing I could think of. It was a bad line in a prank call. Someone spouting insane babble, I couldn't make sense of it. But I had an overwhelming sense of deja vu, and the caller's voice sounded oddly familiar.
Max, something happened at the office today. A strange memo. Something about Vikings. Honey, I gotta run. You can tell me all about it this evening. Have a nice day, darling. The bullet holes were rubies on her chest, blood glowing on her ivory skin. She was so beautiful. The killer was smiling. The flesh of fallen angels. Slowly, the green nightmare faded, leaving dark stains on my soul that would never come off. I felt like flatlining. I was all shook up. I woke up in a cold sweat, sick and tired to the bone, lying in a puddle of my own puke. The hag had said take me to cold steel before it had all gone crazy. It was a clue. The only one I had. It took me forever to crawl back to my feet and hit the road, but when I did, I drove straight to cold steel foundry outside the city. There was a whole lot of action around the place for a freezing winter night. Trucks coming and going, men running. I had the drop on the mystery witch. She thought I was dead. I was on her blind side. I was going in. The bad trip had put me in a crazy mood. Adrenaline pumping through my aching veins. Staggering on the mill roof in ice and snow and wild wind. I was a ninja. My kung fu was strong. I wasn't hitting anybody. At best, I was Superman on kryptonite about to fall through a skylight, down to where it was all going down. A half-abandoned industrial area in the middle of nowhere. The factory was a perfect front for any number of illegal activities. In the belly of the plant, molten metal boiled and bubbled like a witch's brew.
Out in the night, snow fell like confetti over the Devil's Parade. The storm was anything but over.
into the night, snow fell like confetti over the Devil's Parade. The storm was anything but over.
facility has been compromised. Repeat, the Deep Six has been compromised. Initiate Operation Dead Eyes. The walkie-talkie military lingo could mean only one thing. They were getting ready to destroy the evidence and vanish into the night. I was so close. The hidden truths were just around the corner. operation paperwork and all merchandise missing again a chemist had tried to smuggle it out for his own private party locked him up in cell b7 and d6's old test facility to wait for proper processing i was close enough to hear the secrets just beyond the next doorway Mercenaries were running a tight operation, paperwork and all. Merchandise missing again. A chemist had tried to smuggle it out for his own private party. Locked him up in cell B7 and D6's old test facility to wait for proper processing. I was close enough to hear the secrets, just beyond the next doorway.
monitor showed me the way. Diagrams fill the control room screens, all but one. An elevator titled D6 on one of the screens, somewhere onwards, past rows of ovens, in the core of the plant.
showed me the way. Processing diagrams fill the control room screens, all but one. An elevator titled D6 on one of the screens, somewhere onwards, past rows of ovens in the core of the plant.
pursuit of the intruder. Taken on the role of the mythic detective, Bogart is Marlowe, or is Sam Spade going after the Maltese Falcon to unravel all the mysteries? Following a path of clues to that final revelation, even if it would take me down to the cold, cavernous depths of a grave. Well, you can't do this! My men are still inside! Do you have any idea why this is called Operation Dead Eyes? Let's do it. Attention all personnel. The self-destruction sequence has been initiated. Evacuate the complex We've immediately. Seen the logo the on the floor before. Sequence has been initiated. Proceed to the nearest exit immediately. There was an old army bunker under the steel mill. I knew the military plaque on the floor. I had seen the thousand variations of the insignia on crumbling brick walls everywhere in the city. The sword replaced by a syringe. Project Valhalla. V for Valkyr. V for Valhalla. All of a sudden, it read like a crackpot conspiracy theory. using the workstation when he died. The half-life of the lab rat had ended online, his password blinking on the screen. 665. 
the neighbor of the beast. Decontamination in progress. Decontamination completed. Attention all personnel. The self-destruction sequence has been initiated. Proceed to the nearest exit immediately. Either that or back to the cell. Your choice. Okay, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. Screen. Top secret. Project Valhalla. U.S. Army. Yggdrasil Network. Valhalla. The otherworldly place in Norse mythology where the bravest heroes spent their afterlife feasting and fighting forever. Their wounds miraculously healed night after night. Valkyr. The maidens who chose the most courageous Viking warriors and carried them to Valhalla. 1991. The research objective is to create a chemical substance to enhance the stamina and morale of infantry troops. 1995. Results unsatisfactory. Project cancelled. Someone had decided to continue the sick experiment unauthorized. Project compromised. Data leak. Fix the damage by any means necessary. Security clearance read. Authorized by the project lead. Field test. Double the dosage for all the remaining test subjects. Observe and record the subject's behavior in an urban setting. The drop-off point was my old address in New Jersey. The file dated three years ago. Just when you thought you had reached the deepest depths of horror, it suddenly got worse. 
how to turn off that small voice inside your head that started to whisper that you should be glad that now, if not before, your revenge was justifiable on any conceivable moral scale. That small voice proved, beyond any doubt, that I was damned. Attention all persons initiated. The cell received the nearest exit initiated. Proceed to the nearest exit immediately. His name was acting as a self-fulfilling prophecy. bunker under the steel mill. I knew the military plaque on the floor. I had seen a thousand variations of the insignia on crumbling brick walls everywhere in the city. The sword replaced by a syringe. Project Valhalla. V for Valkyr. V for Valhalla. All of a sudden it read like a crackpot conspiracy theory. Proceed to the nearest exit immediately. in the Valkyr case. The door code was a mystery to me. had been using the workstation when he died. The half-life of the lab rat had ended online, his password blinking on the screen. 665. The neighbor of the beast. Attention all personnel. The self-destruction sequence has been initiated. Proceed to the nearest exit immediately.
caught in the middle of the deadly web that was the Valkyr case. One of the lab terminals had the project logo on the... Top secret. Project Valhalla. U.S. Just when you thought you had reached the deepest depths of horror, it suddenly got worse. How to turn off that small voice inside your head that started to whisper that you should be glad that now, if not before, your revenge was justifiable on any conceivable moral scale. That small voice proved, beyond any doubt, that I was damned. Just when you thought you had reached the deepest depths of horror, it suddenly got worse. How to turn off that small voice inside your head that started to whisper that you should be glad that now, if not before, your revenge was justifiable on any conceivable moral scale. That small voice proved, beyond any doubt, that I was damned. Attention all personnel. The dagger healed woman had come and gone a long time ago. There was nothing Proceed more for me to do. exit immediately. The name was acting as a self-fulfilling prophecy. Jigsaw and the final picture is you finishing that same puzzle. A mad, green-eyed killer standing behind you. An urban legend come true. The Project Valhalla test subjects had been the mad junkies who had murdered my loved ones. The rest was simple body count math. It all pointed to her. Ms. Valkyr. The factory went up in a fiery inferno behind me. All my leads were dead, turned to smoke and dust. I had lost my way. I hadn't slept in a million years. I felt thin as death. I've been living on an endless supply of weak old donuts. They were fuel for this crazy furnace inside my head. I couldn't remember when I had last seen the sun. I was on a permanent graveyard shift. When the darkness fell, New York City became something else. Any old Sinatra song notwithstanding. Bad things happened in the night. On the streets of that other city. Noir York City. I was in an all-night diner, down in cup after cup of coffee that tasted like engine oil, when a new message from BB got me back on the killer track. What the hell happened at Roscoe Street? Maxie, I'm going out on a limb here. We need to talk this through, come up with a plan. 2.30 a.m., the choir communications garage. The more I thought about Alex's murder in the frame-up, the more it felt like an inside job. I should have seen it coming. BB had sold me out, and now he wanted to finish what he'd started. 
The garage was dead. BB showed up in his tailor-made suit, gold watch, and cufflinks to match. All way beyond a cop's pay. Maxie. Oozing suave charm, he was guilty as hell. What the hell does BB stand for, anyway? Backstabbing bastard? Come on, don't be like that. Have a cigar. I don't smoke. Maxie, you have no idea how big this is. It's huge. You have no idea. station when he died. The Half-Life little lap that had ended online, his password blinking on the screen. So 665. Neighbor of the Beast. Attention all personnel. The self-destruction sequence has been initiated. Proceeding to redirect this immediately. deadly web that was the Valkyr. One of the lab terminals had the... Top secret. Project Valhalla. U.S. Army. Yggdrasil Network. Valhalla. 
the otherworldly place in Norse mythology where the bravest heroes spent their afterlife feasting and fighting forever, their wounds miraculously healed night after night. Valkyr, the maidens who chose the most courageous Viking warriors and carried them to Valhalla. 1991, the research objective is to create a chemical substance to enhance the stamina and morale of infantry troops. 1995, results unsatisfactory. Project canceled. Someone had decided to continue the sick experiment unauthorized. Project compromised. Data leak. Fix the damage by any means necessary. Security clearance red. Authorized by the project lead. Field test. Double the dosage for all the remaining test subjects. Observe and record the subject's behavior in an urban setting. The drop-off point was my old address in New Jersey. The file dated three years ago. Just when you thought you had reached the deepest depths of horror, it suddenly got worse. How to turn off that small voice inside your head that started to whisper that you should be glad that now, if not before, your revenge was justifiable on any conceivable moral scale. That small voice proved beyond any doubt that I was, that I was damned. damned. All the dagger Result wielded woman had come and gone a long time ago. There was nothing more for me to hear. The bunker's name was acting as a self <laughs> Jigsaw. I felt thin as death. fleeing from the scene, leaving his paid thugs to do his dirty work.
of setting any fires, but I did remember the flames.
really hate people who refuse to see the inevitable, refuse to do the smart thing. The payphone started to ring. Yeah. Thanks, Payton. Whatever does it for you. This is Alfred Wooden. I can give you the name of your enemy. Come to the Asgard building presently. We are expecting you. Woden was waiting for me on the steps of the old building. Mr. Payne, let's go inside. The others are anxious to begin. The others? Despite the general misconception, this building actually predates the city hall by two years. Must be the oldest municipal building still in use here at the foot of the Brooklyn Bridge. No kidding. The old man played tour guide as he led me through a dark, domed hall. The answers I was after loomed large ahead. Mr. Payne, I would like to introduce you to my colleagues in what we call the Inner Circle. You've been watching too much X-Files. You have seen the files on Project Valhalla. We can fill the gaps, provide you with the information missing from those files. We were all involved in the early stages of the project during the Gulf War. What's the catch? We would very much like to blow this thing wide open, but our hands are tied. Her name is Nicole Horn. She was the key figure in Project Valhalla. When the funding was discontinued, she simply refused to quit. She knew exactly what she had in her hands. Nicole Horn is the president of Acer Corporation. She has more than half the city in her pocket. This must be kept under wraps. If you try to go public with this, we will deny any knowledge. We need you to take her out. Afterwards, we can protect you. Make all the charges go away. That was the cue for the killer suits to kick in the doors and swarm inside. But I decided to leave early anyway. It was only a one-story floor. One of the monitors showed... On screen, the so-called corpse of Alfred Woden stood up, miraculously waking from his dirt nap, looking smug among his dead pals. In the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. I didn't know how he'd pulled it off, but it was a pretty slick way to get out of all his promises. Most of what he had said fit too well to be a load of crap.
videotape lay on the desk. The coal horn had blackmailed the inner circle into silence. The tape came with a curt extortion note on a piece of expensive paper. I remembered Candy Dawn taping her clients in action on the side, selling the tapes to the highest bidder. I was sure the kinky sex was nowhere near Alfred Woden's worst sin. But I had a feeling that when this was over, any collateral would come in handy. mission preps with military precision. The critical areas in the Acer Corporation headquarters blueprints were circled in red. The president's office was at the top of the building, right below her penthouse suite. The elevators were controlled by a security computer, part of the mainframe located underground below the building. The high-rise was sealed as tight as a sci-fi fortress. Nothing seems to stop Acer Corporation's phenomenal victory march. Incredibly, the stocks are still rocketing. Worried experts already see a danger in the company's success. Some have gone as far as to say that Acer Corporation is about to become an even bigger monopoly than Microsoft ever was. movie ending ever.
I dreamed of revenge. Those dreams were always nightmares, of coming close and then failing. Now I was close. I had a name to guide me, Nicole Horn. I had nothing to lose. circle had been involved in. There were rows of cabinets full of files. The Serpentine Secret Society went back a long way, always pulling strings from the shadows. I couldn't say I was sorry. Woden's move in some Byzantine power game had cut the circle's membership roster to one. The old man wanted me on cleanup duty. It was my mess too.
down. Shoot to kill. Let's finish this. dirt, still going strong. The cardinal rule in going after someone with an intention to kill was not to make it personal, which it almost always ended up being anyway. It did with me. I took my time, cruising around the city in the snow. There was no hurry. I knew what I had to do now. I took my time, thinking about it, building up the rage. When I was ready, I parked the stolen wheels at the front entrance of the Acer Corporation headquarters. Got out, got in, got cracking. I had a bullet with Nicole Horn's name on it. I had 10,000 bullets with the hag's name on them. She had ultra-high-tech security systems, enough mercenaries and weaponry to start World War III. There was no fear. New York disappeared behind a veil of snow. I had crossed the threshold. This was her domain, sleek and sexy and soulless. All glass and steel. A place of color-coded security key cards, metal detectors, and surveillance systems. 